It's Nabil. You guys know me. Uh, I have to say, if my voice shakes at all, um, I've been shivering. I'm not actually nervous. I found you all to be very friendly. Um, just waiting for the next menopausal hot flash to warm me up. <laughs> But my job here uh, today is just to take a few minutes to uh, tell you about the Health and Human Services Open Data Portal Study Group's findings, which is a mouthful, and our, our recommendations for moving forward. So what I first want to let you know is that uh, to do this great work, we've actually shared uh, the collective intelligence of a number of great minds. And while I'm not going to read all of the names here, uh, what I'd like you to get a sense of is the breadth of experience that we're drawing from, as well as the diverse areas of expertise and the cross-cutting level of collaboration among government and non-government uh, entities. And I just have to say personally, it's been a true joy to learn from this study group. And I particularly want to thank Stewards of Change uh, as the project managers who have convened and exceptionally facilitated uh, this group. So in this presentation, I want to focus on summarizing our progress in learning about open data and the many areas of, of this project that require really very careful and deliberate thought, I think as you've heard uh, throughout the last day and a half. And then I'm going to end with some recommendations and thoughts about our next steps. Well, we paid a lot of attention up front to how an open data platform could best serve the needs of our organization. And we asked ourselves what kind of requirements uh, we had for such a pl platform and how we might want to use it. So ultimately, uh, we learned that Socrata is used by another, a, a number of other governmental agencies uh, who have shared with us in the last day and a half and uh, is essentially a turnkey product, meaning that it's ready to go right away, out of the box, and uh, we wouldn't need to have to do our own programming in, in this uh, just to get the system up and running. Uh, we considered that a good thing. And another ba major benefit uh, that we really paid attention to was that Socrata does offer professional services and support. And as you know, the concept of open data uh, is pretty new. And Socrata has been working with government and open data for uh, five years now. And uh, they bring significant experience, I think, to, to the picture in terms of implementation services, um, training so that uh, you can be sustainable and keep this going, and uh, even things like branding and marketing of, of your portal. So we thought that those would be uh, extremely beneficial for us. And even before this uh, Open Data Fest, we've learned some significant lessons through the experience of others. And uh, many of these are, are you in the room who have shared with us, so, so we really appreciate that. And through those inquiries and this event, um, we've gathered quite a bit of knowledge. And content uh, determination and creation uh, has been discussed, which I think is important. The development of policies and uh, how we do this around open data sharing, uh, how we share across agencies, how California could leverage those things uh, are all parts of, of the puzzle that we've been learning about. And so we've thought a lot about how do we identify the data sets that should be considered for the portal? And that's been talked about in uh, the last day and a half as well. And I think you've learned, uh, as well as we have, that there are a lot of ways to think about this. And uh, we've heard uh, throughout the last two days that you could look at data sets that are high in demand. Um, and we look at these as ones that may be often requested by hits to our website or those that we have a number of media requests for or Public Record Act requests. Uh, those would certainly fit as high demand data sets. There are also data sets that may, may have high leveraging value. In other words, they may support strategic goals and interests uh, that we have in our organization. And uh, so we've thought about those issues and, and what kinds of strategies we may have. And then there are data sets that simply are really good at engaging the public and getting them involved uh, with uh, public health and uh, our online presence. 
Um, and finally, there are data sets that help to solve some particular problem or inform a policy that we may be interested in. So uh, now I'll get a little more specific because we actually have talked about the data sets that we may consider early on uh, in, in an open data portal if, uh, as California considers uh, the proceedings. Um, so ones that have, have been suggested meeting some of these criteria that I've just mentioned uh, would be birth data, for example. Uh, so my shop in, in Vital Records uh, has 22 years worth of birth data that we have in PDF and Excel spreadsheets on our website. And uh, they're aggregated by zip code. And so uh, that would be one particular data set that would certainly uh, fulfill the high demand uh, criterion because we get public records requests uh, constantly for, for birth data. Um, so that would be one. Another one, uh, our partners in the Centers for Infectious Disease experience high demand for their sexually transmitted disease data. Um, and so that would be another one that we would consider. There's also a lot of data that's already available online um, but could be uh, packaged differently in an open data portal, and that is the healthcare associated infections data. Um, and those are really good indicators that we feel could be leveraged to improve clinical care. Um, and then there is a Healthy Community Indicators Project that you may have heard about in California. And it's creating a number of really good indicators. And uh, those indicators are linked to the Healthy Communities Framework, uh, which is derived from our Health in All Policies Task Force. And so we think that adding these indicators to the portal would be useful for um, planning healthy communities and our, our projects, our policies, the environmental changes uh, that would be happening in terms of community health. So we've realized that not all data sets need to be about populations um, and their personal health, but there are actually other data sets that may include directories, lists, and resources that could really help people navigate certain systems more effectively. So we're also considering those kinds of things for the open data, data portal. Um, and finally, there are data sets that are, are simple and uh, simply seem to resonate with the public, um, like the example that uh, we've heard about from New York, the uh, baby names, the most popular baby names by county. Um, so some of those, uh, you all might almost say no-brainer, but, uh, but important data sets that really get the public engaged in, in our work. One of the very rich areas of discussion in our study group was the conversations that we've had around principles and policy. We covered a lot of ground here uh, simply by trying to clarify for ourselves uh, what our expectations are for an open data platform and uh, defining the expectations of our stakeholders and uh, what should they be able to expect from us um, now and, and over the long term because sustainability, uh, as has come up here, is, is always an ongoing question. And we've discussed governance issues uh, and how it might work specifically in California. We always like to think we're very different from everybody else, and maybe we are, maybe not. Um, but we began to think about some of those issues. And, uh, and then we began to outline our goals for California. Simultaneously with our goal setting, we uh, had to do, as Daniel mentioned in the very beginning of, of this event, and that is to begin with the end in mind. So we started thinking about the end. Uh, what would success look like if we stand up an open data portal in California? Well, when we think about this internally um, within the Department of Public Health as being a demonstration site for an open data portal, we begin to think about how we may see increased efficiencies in government. As I mentioned uh, a few minutes ago, uh, just by not having to create custom data sets in, in response to the myriad uh, media or Public Records Act requests that we get, um, and you've heard that same experience mentioned here before, we expect to, uh, to see those efficiencies. And we also expect to experience a streamlined uh, management of data with increased access, more timely updates, and uh, certainly more efficient exchange of data. And if we think about some of the more external views of our success, our study group considered that evidence of interagency collaboration on things like data standards, uh, implementation, and coordination would certainly be a big win. 
And we also felt that showing a higher level of engagement with a vibrant user community would indicate that we've succeeded in this endeavor. And I think we've talked a lot uh, in the last two days about how we engage our stakeholders and the public. So then what, what were our recommendations for next steps? Well, in the very basic sense, we felt that we needed to effectively synthesize all of this uh, massive knowledge that, that we're gaining in ways that will serve us in terms of creating our own process here. Um, but we also uh, need to develop an education and communications process as a way to broaden our understanding throughout our own agencies and departments as well as uh, others who may want to get involved. Our study group also thought that it was critical to have a solid plan for nurturing engagement. Um, as I've mentioned, and this goes back to how we continue to strategize and prioritize those high value data sets uh, for uh, release, as well as continuing our convenings um, as, as a study group and, and enlarging and expanding that to share ideas and best practices. And as we've heard about, there are many ways to reach out to promote public interaction by soliciting ideas and feedback, as well as organizing events to promote in in innovation. So one of the areas that I think we found challenging was the clear articulation of benchmarks or metrics that could be used to evaluate our success. And we need to identify milestones along the way, for example, at six and 12 month marks. And uh, I'll just put in a plug in for the last session. We're going to be very interested to hear from you on this one um, because you're going to be asked to consider what kinds of metrics might show how uh, successful an open data portal uh, could be in California. Because uh, after all, in the end, we want to own this face of pure accomplishment. Um, hi, I'm Louise Besworth. I am the Deputy Director of the Governor's Office of Planning and Research. Um, and I uh, am in a deficit because I was not part of the study group but I, and working group, but I am stepping in for my colleague, Allison Joe, um, who's the Deputy Director of the Strate Strategic Growth Council, um, who was. Um, but I've been working very closely with her on a lot of data issues. Um, and, and so hopefully we'll be able to provide that insight um, on sort of where